welcome back to the Alpha Nerd Podcast. I'm your main host, Kyle, along with my gaming co-host, Andrew. Hello. How are you, Andrew? I'm doing all right. It's it's the summertime. There's a lot of sun. My natural enemy. Yep. Um, so let's start off on a low note. My disappointment in you. <laughs> I know it. Yeah, I know. Because we are now two for two. On you not playing the games that you spun the wheel for. All right, now, the first one, okay. I will give you credit because you already played it and you didn't realize it and you got the titles mixed up. I'm not holding that one against you. And I played an entirely terrible game. To make up for to it. To make yes. up for it, yeah. Now, this one. Oh, man. Sonic 2006. I had a heck of a time trying to even get this to, to, to work or anything. So, it turns out it's not a popular game. No, it's not. Who would have thought? So what I'm going to do is tomorrow morning I'm going to get you a physical copy. Okay. And we will figure it out from there. Okay. All right. Since you can't find anywhere to buy on download. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have an Xbox 360? No. Do you have a PS3? Maybe. A PS3. A 3. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you have that, I mean, I can just use that. Because, yeah, I'll take a look for it. Okay. But, um, so... You're you're desperate for me to play this. Um, I'm gonna still on the low note. I'm gonna talk about Thief real quick. Yeah, that's a low note right there. Oh my god! Um, this is Thief for everyone listening. This is Thief 2014. 14. Yeah. Um, the early Thief series was great. was a great, very popular game. It was it was the um, first stealth game, like the first real stealth. Yeah, game. good yeah. one. And uh, how how they changed it is. Just like every remake they've done in the last X amount of years, they they take something that was completely unique and had its own feel and try to make it into what was popular at the time. Mm-hmm. So what they did with this was Corvo was... Oh, sorry, Garrett. Corvo is the guy from Dishonored. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I got that, it mixed that is, up That there. is correct. That is, I want to, for everyone listening, Thief is not Dishonored. No. Dishonored's a good They're two game. different games and they're similar in some ways. Uh, yeah, the, they're. I mean, Thief. You could argue is the inspiration behind some of Dishonored's co- mm. like stealth mechanics. Mm. But on the other hand, oh no, <laughs> no, no, no. So Dishonored's a good game. The thing, because I, I remember playing the original Thief's games a while ago. But Thief Two: The Dark Age. That was a fantastic um, game. The thing that I noticed is like it's they bad. they took Garrett's personality and made him a generic everyman. Yep. Who also wants to be Batman. That is also correct, yes. The storyline's blatantly obvious. Yep. The gameplay is so, so clunky. Mm-hmm. Then, on top of it, the controls that they use for my Steam port... Oh my god, I wanted to kill myself over it. <laughs> you know you can remap those, probably. You should be if you're playing it on Steam. You should be able to read. I should, it. but I wanted to play it how it was intended. Oh no, that's one of my things. I try to play the game how it was intended, and I never had a game where L two is your action button, R one is your combat button, but R two is a different combat button that slightly does something not correct. I mean, those are the Dark Souls controls. R one swing, R two is heavy attack. Okay, that's terrible. That it actually works out really well. Well, but ugh. not in not in a first person game like that. It just no. would not. So, in that, it's R one is your club to knock people out, but R two is shoot your bow and everything else. That's and weird. then X is interact with some things, but you need L to interact uh, left trigger to interact with other things. So it switches back before before back and forth between the two. Two different interact buttons. So. And I'm, to interact with anything in the environment, you need the left trigger, like to jump over boxes, to jump across pits, uh, to like mantle or like to, the to mantle do tra- to tra- tra- uh, transversal stuff. Yeah, like anything traversal. that involves traversal or yeah. anything like that requires the L to jump down off buildings, to get down, to get up, to what, sneak, what happens if to... you gotta 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 get down? Yes, I hate you sometimes. <laughs> so <laughs> that that blew my mind because it's like, who uses L two? And then they're like. Oh wait, you have to use X here to interact with this stuff. I'm like, oh okay, my. Okay, I get it. Yeah, traversal is L two, and then non traversal mm. interactions are X. Yeah, that's weird. And then uh, the do takedowns. It's R. Uh, Which one? 
R one. Okay. To do to club them. Yeah. To do it's just it's so bad. Yes. Yeah. And then I played it. I was like, okay, this is gonna be an older game. But it doesn't even feel like a 2014 game. It feels like a 2009 to 2010 game. I mean, yeah, that was I, that game came out. I think either right around the same time as the Tomb Raider remake, because that was Square Enix. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that did that, and that was kind of their time where they were like, "Hey, let's reboot all this stuff and see which one sticks." Like yeah, this... De- Deus Ex did did well, yes, with Human Revolution and the Mankind Divided, and they just gave up on it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Tomb Raider did well, even though it never met the expectations that Square Enix put out for it. You remember, like, the whole thing. The original Tomb Raider sold, like, 2 million copies, but Square Enix expected it to sell, like, 6 million or something yeah, they, like they, that. Yeah, they, they try to shoot for the moon. They, so, they do. So, like, just the atmosphere, the storyline is, like I said, super predictable. And it's, there, there was nothing special about that game. Yeah, and one of the things is the original games had their own... Like language, like their own version of curse words. Mm-hmm. Like one of them was Taft. Mm-hmm. Now it's just regular old normal curse words, which is like what? Like what? Yeah, Kyle? we're not getting into <laughs> like, like what? We're on public radio. We can't do that. <laughs> so, like, it's just it's really bad. It's really clunky. I'm a little more than halfway through it right now, and I'm hating every minute of That's it. That's more than I thought you would. I, you know, I honestly I would have played like the first. Three this levels. is the worst three dollars I ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> I bought this for three dollars, <laughs> and I'm going to complete it at this point. Okay, I'm not going to hundred percent it, but I'm going to get through it. No, you you need to hundred. No, no, I can't even finish so, that statement. It's, so it's terrible. you're going to have two games you're going to have to beat because you're going to have to play catch up. Oh, uh, all right. So I did. I will say that since I, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to play it. I did, you know, try and watch some gameplay and some cutscenes for it. But I actually googled Sonic kisses woman. And those search results were not what I was expecting whatsoever. So I didn't get very far in that aspect. Yeah. Oh, you tried to do research and you <laughs> failed. So it's... I'm trying to like reiterate on some more Thief thing because I feel like I should talk about it more since I... Why? It It is a game you do not need to talk that much about. The fa- Everything yeah, you've said true. so far is more, more than, than anyone more has even paid attention, attention to, to it. it. And it's and the sad thing is... like It had what DLC. I, the, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the most mind blowing thing. Somebody said I bought the deluxe edition for three dollars. <laughs> I was gonna say I remember when the DLC maps came out, and the common consensus was like, "Who'd pay money for that?" Yeah. Like, so, but to keep my integrity on the show, I'm gonna finish it. There's, it's definitely not the four hours you said it was. <laughs> I thought it. It's it's worth maybe four hours of your time just to understand how terrible it is. I didn't yeah, think no. you keep going. The you don't story have to campaign at bare minimum is eleven to twelve hours. Oh man, I'm going to get there. It's way longer than it needs to be. Now I might it might take me a lot longer than twelve hours to get there because how bad the clunk, how clunky the game controls are. No, you should have just said how bad the clunk was. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad it makes it hard to do anything consistently. Mm-hmm. Like it's hard to sneak because. There's such a weird variety of buttons you need to do to do different actions that it makes it hard to. Well, it's a it's a 2014 action game. Just bring out your AK, like you, yeah, you, right. You just, to two tap all the guards. <laughs> yeah. So that was my experience with that. Um, before we get into too much else, let's spin our wheel for this oh, this week. Man. Okay, fine. So let's see. Right. What am I picking for you? All right. Let it rip. It is adventure. Okay. An adventure game. You got to give me an adventure game. Okay. Please pick a game that I can play in a reasonable amount of time. Wait, didn't you get adventure last time? Isn't this why we were on? You were on Sonic because you had adventure last time too. I yeah. I think I got platformer last time. No, I got platformer. Oh, you got. Yeah, because you got Ori. Maybe yeah. I was on adventure last. Do you yeah. want me to respin? Yes, yeah, respin that right. because. Just because I don't want to make you play two of the same genre right now. Action. Okay, I can work with that. <laughs> That's a very generic one. Uh, all right. Okay. What? What is it? Um, I don't know yet. I'm gonna take right, some time right, think right, about right, it. You spin. I, I think I want to save that. I think we're gonna start doing that. Is like at the end of the show, reveal okay. what we're gonna do to each other in the last right. ten minutes. Um, since Sonic Six is a bad game, I'm gonna work on finding you a good. Action game right. in my list. The one that the one that I can get to easily. 
and access a little bit, a little bit more easily than Sonic 2006. Yeah, we'll we'll figure that out. All right, spin it. Wild card plus. Oh, I got scared. I saw wild card. I was like, yeah. no. All right, so wild so card I'm... plus for people at home is it can be any game at all, but it's got to be a good game. Yes, and it's got to be a game that the person winning the spin would like. Yes. That that's generally it. I have like a billion games for this. <laughs> yeah, which is good because you can pick any game. So a bajillion is the perfect number. Yeah, yeah. There are so many fantastic titles that I can pick. Uh, it's more a matter of do you do you want to play them or not? <laughs> and but the the whole point of this mm-hmm. is to get me to play games that are that are good that, that are, are good that I good. haven't played and that are not Resident Evil. <laughs> Or Silent oh, Hill. Well, there goes all the games I was. Resident pick. Evil, Silent Hill, most horror games. I was actually going to pick Resident Hill, Resident <laughs> Hill Four. Um, but okay, there's a lot of games I can pick for this. All right, so just mold around in your head. And... I am. I'm trying to think of what ones you'll like. You will. You will enjoy playing. Um, my biggest suggestion is like make sure it has not just fun gameplay, but it's got to be a story I can. Oh, like the if, story, if I can grasp onto it, that's what will make me enjoy. I've enjoyed terrible games. Shark dating together. Yes, <laughs> just because the storyline was so good that it made me overlook control schemes. Okay. It made me look overlook. Do you like uh, Do you like isometric RPGs? Which ones are isometric? The top downs. Yeah, top down. Yeah. Okay. I've there's a, there's a lot of stuff I play. There's not much. Like I said, it always comes down to the biggest factor. Storyline. If the storyline's dumb, I'm not going to get myself attached to it enough to learn the controls. All right. Okay. All right. I got. I got a game in mind. Okay. We'll save that. for Yeah. Last we'll time. save that for later. So, speaking of Resident Evil, what you uh, is there Resident Evil news? Yes. Particularly around Resident Evil Four. Oh, you were like, hey, the Resident Evil Four trailer came out while I was at work. Yeah. And I immediately stopped working. <laughs> I looked at I looked at my boss. I was like, "Yo, I'm taking my break." He's like, "What?" I was like, "He goes, You're, that's like half an hour from now." I was like, "Well, I'll be back a half an hour from now, and then it'll be like, I never took my break at all." So I went and watched that immediately. It looks great. It's a reimagining Ginning. of Resident Evil Four, and you know what? Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Now let's weigh this out properly. I've weighed it out. It's going to be good. Yes, I believe it will be good. Yeah, yeah. But there's buts. There's always buts, guys. There's <laughs> <laughs> the things that I feel that will hurt this game is one of the biggest things that made Resident Evil 4 popular uh-huh. was some of its over top action y cliches. Yeah. Like everything Wesker touched in that game. Wesker wasn't that really that game that much. He well, was he was in the he was, end. He, he, he was like really I'm talking about like you fought the tyrant at the end, right? No, with the RPGs. No, yeah, and the oil, like there was an like an oil rig or something. You yeah, but it around. wasn't a tyrant. What was it? It was Sad- uh, Sadler. Oh yeah, okay, all right. It's been a long time. So yeah, I it was so Wesker had a, almost nothing to do with it. Yeah, I know. Like so, the things that made this game great, it was really what it, you what you buying. Yeah, that was one of the good ones. What you buy it. Um, What they did was take Leon Kennedy, who was a rookie cop in the number two remake, or in number two period, or in any of the games. He was just a rookie cop that got thrown into the zombie-infested city, and he had to, you know, work his way through. What city was it? Was it Marmoset City? Uh, Prairie Dog City? It's Raccoon City. Oh, Raccoons. My bad. My bad. (laughs) So, (laughs) So, what happened was, at some point, he got... Because he survived everything, Umbrella wanted to keep tabs on him. He became a secret agent. Yeah, he became a secret agent. <laughs> like between Umbrella Corporation and the U.S. government, they they like bogarted him into being a secret agent. Because part of it is he didn't want to be. Yeah, he wanted to be like a freedom fighter kind of guy and do his own thing. Trained masseuse, I think, was his <laughs> other career. Yes, yeah, that was his other career yeah, path. Yeah, yeah. But then he, they're like, nope, you're going to be a secret agent, more or less. <laughs> and it was great because there was... Find the president's daughter. Yeah. And what made it great is he had the completely stereotype of the secret agent, you know, cool guy. Like, he had the coat with the fur... On its neck, and then he Coat popped his collar, the and 
then he'd like it would always do the frame freight where you'd like spin kick a guy and then the guy would fly through a shelf and didn't you like suplex people or something? You could suplex people. I, thought, I remember something would, like that. <laughs> there's so many th- crazy things to do. But the cutscenes were great. Like, um, so it, it looks from the cut the, from the trailer that they show that they're taking it closer to like a Resident Evil villagey direction. Not even village. Um, I think they're going more the remake. Yeah, two yeah. remake where it's not. It's, it's a serious it's, game. Yeah, it's gonna be more serious. Yeah, which serious. I'm, Serious. serious, cereal, very serious. cereal, super yeah. cereal, Sorry. super cereal. So, I'm okay with that. I'm, I really am okay Are with that. Are you, Kyle? Yes. Now, I'm going to be sad because there's not going to be any. Like, I liked some of the hokiness. I liked when. Uh, you you have to admit when, though that that them dropping the hokiness has really enhanced. The series as a whole. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Like seven and eight, they didn't need to be any hokey. No. No, no hokey. Kind. No, but I, I, f- I haven't played two, the two three remake. Even though they are actually getting their next gen upgrades here in the next two is, Monday. Two is amazing. Three is three is like an hour long. Isn't it? It's too short. It's too short. Yeah. They cut out a lot of things. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed in it, but it was that still has, good. Uh, that has Jill St. Patrick's Day in it, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Good. Jill Vane. Jill St. Patrick's Day. I like it. Yeah. Of course, she's just a drunk Irish woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, Carlos? Is the other guy named Carlos? Yes, Carlos. Okay. okay. Where he had the weird hair effect. <laughs> was he in 3? I never played yes. 3. Okay. The original 3, he was in there. Okay. But he was more, like, your generic everyman. Okay, that's fine. Where this one, they gave him a weird afro, and then how the texture worked. Yeah. It looked like it was like glitched out. So it was like fuzzy, like, you know, oh, unrendered. Yeah. yeah, I know. And they're yeah. like, no, that's the finished product. I'm like, who who signed off on that? Our hair effects are the best, except when they aren't. Like, because every, uh, all everyone else's hair was very detailed. Like, his when, was just, his, when Jill shit. fell and fell and looked like natural hair, his was just a fuzzy afro that looked like a chia pet on his face. Some some developer phoned that in pretty hard. Yeah, they were just like, I'm done with this. <laughs> Let's just get this done. Uh, yeah, I actually, you know what? When the next gen upgrades come out, I may uh, I may get your copy of Resident Evil 2 Remake and try I have that more. out. Because that, that's supposed to come out with the Capcom showcase on Monday. Yes. Um, I tried playing the. Has Versus ever come out? Did they or did they just completely scrap that? Uh, it got delayed again. A lot, yeah. Okay, let's make sure it, it did come out. A beta came out. Everybody played it and was like, "No one needs this." <laughs> and then Capcom was like, "Uh, let's recall this. this we is, need yeah. some more work." Because the other multiplayer for Resident Evil Three was also awful. What was it? It was a weird. What the remake? Yeah, three remake oh, came with its own oh. multiplayer. That, that was sounds, attached to the game. Like kind of like Reverses is. Where reverses. Reverses is. S- 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 where it's a separate game, but it's attached to the disc, okay, so yeah, you can yeah. just download it on and have it. Yeah. So the way it worked was... Wasn't Mercenaries like that? Where it was... it was No, it was just attached. I thought it was like a separate game. Like when you boot it up, you could pick Mercenaries or the main... No, it's, it's part of the main menu, but... Oh, okay. This one was like its own separate download, separate game. Okay. So the way that worked in this one was... It was a prequel to everything. It was trying to fill in a bunch of backstory, which was... They didn't do it very well. Um, the whole concept is like... Uh, what's that s- stupid game where you play four hunters and hunt down... Like one monster and the whole object of the monster is to keep getting stronger and stronger until you can beat them. Are you talking them. about Evolve? Yeah, it's kind of like Evolve. Wow, no one has mentioned that the game, game in forever. years. Yeah. Um, so how they did it was kind of like that, except for all four of the people you played, you picked out, like, there was like six to eight characters you could pick. Uh-huh. They all have specialties. Was one Wesker? No. Oh. They're all regular people. They're all yeah. regular people, and the whole objective was the four that were on a team were all just survivors trying to get through all these tests by Umbrella Corporation. Okay. They were thrown in like a giant testing area and they had to survive. Yeah, and, I know. Do your SATs. Yeah, stuff like that. pretty much. Yeah. Um, where the other player, the fifth player, would play a scientist and they would have different abilities depending on which scientist you use. Mm-hmm. You'd have access to zombies, liquors, monsters, gases, like all kinds of different stuff. With the liquors, do you get Jaeger? Do you get Hops. like... <laughs> So, <laughs> for for those of you who are not aware, the liquor is a creature in Resident Evil that licks things. Yes, with its long tongue, it is so, not a beverage of any kind. kind. 
So it was very unbalanced, just like anything with PvP. Yeah. It's always balanced. Yeah. So the first time it came out, you could not win as the survivors. Huh. I it mean, was it was so unbalanced. The Is had, that really unbalanced or is that how life works? Kyle? Yes, that's how life works. But <laughs> for this game, what they wanted to do is not only did they do it that, but they also made it like an escape room. So every section of the map, you would get a little more to explore. Was and then you would still have to fight the zombies off. And wasn't Call of Duty zombies like that? Didn't didn't you have like a bus? You had to yeah. stop and like do some weird puzzle, and then get back on the bus and drive around, or something. Yeah, or you got in a one room, and then as you progressed more, you got more and more rooms open. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it was kind of like. But it was really bad because it. Number one, they'd be like, "Oh, well, you got to investigate this body, and then find the missing body parts," and you know, it was really poorly put together. It was terrible. And then also on top of it, not only is it the escape. Like, the thing about the escape room mm-hmm. is there was a time limit. If you didn't beat it in that time limit, you lost. Uh, it was so poorly built. So, I've never heard of a of a good online Resident Evil mode. There is one. What is it? It was a specific game. It You're not was talking about out- Operation Raccoon City. Right? No. <laughs> oh, that was a travesty, and I played that, too. Oh, fond memories of it being bad. Um... No. Outbreak. Outbreak. Resident Evil Outbreak for the PS2. For the PS2? For the PS2. Wow, okay. When the original PS2 got it, it was back when you had to get that big clunky thing to hook into your... Yeah. The modem to hook yep. into your I, Xbox. I remember that. I mean, your PlayStation. It was so bad. But it was a really good game. Yeah. It was... A lot of people liked it. Yeah. So it was that that cannot go on the wheel, Kyle. <laughs> that cannot. Yes, go it on can. The, Outbreak. No, yes, it can. No, it cannot. That's actually easy to get a hold of with a PS2. Yes, I can get a hold of that and end up end a modem. <laughs> no, because the newer PS2s can just do it. What newer PS2s? Like the the re the re editions and stuff later on. What when did they, did they stop? They stopped They made the Slims PS2s. and yes, yeah, a while ago. But the Slims and all that could just get online. You didn't need the extra hundred dollar attachment. It was ridiculous. The PS twos. Well, that was one of the best times in gaming, though. Ah, uh, yes, the Final Fantasy X Titus laugh scene. No, I'm talking about just in general. Like the, it was like the it was the renaissance of video games. Let's be honest, it was a renaissance. Of video true, games. Michelangelo. It, uh, it allowed for so many third party developers to take a handful of cash and create their game and be reasonably sold. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Look the, how many, like, crazy good games there were. And look how many, the most, ex, most of the most expensive games that are out there right now, if you can find them in Hardcate, like, like, not destroyed, not just a disc, but the hardback, everything put together, mm-hmm. are all PS2 games from that time that did not sell well, but they were good. And they were just, they, they were just thrown into the sea of other games and they just sometimes got looked over. Like Bubsy the Cat. No, that wasn't PS2. It should have been. No. Um, like, there was a weird one. I can't... It, it, my buddy used to play it all the time. He found it at a Blockbuster. The whole concept was... What's a, what's a Blockbuster? Yeah, right? No. None of serious. these millennials. What, what's, a, what's a Blockbuster? Is they that kind of like a Circus City? No, they still exist. <laughs> there's still one or two around. I, think, I thought there was one. I thought there was one Blockbuster. I think there's like two. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, the whole concept was like... A tower defense game. Okay. It was RP. It was a JRPG tower defense game. So the whole thing is you go up this tower, and each room, you had to defend this chick. The whole thing was she had to get to the top to perform a ritual to save the world. Okay. The whole time is, as you were setting up, you had to set up the castle mm-hmm. inside it. Like you could set up booby traps and pitfalls, wallpaper. Yeah, like dead, dead serious. It was like creating the castle to be able to defend itself. Wow, you got through this. And it was really intricate. It was really crazy. Mm-hmm. That's he is, His copy's like a $300 game now. But what is it? I can't. I got to ask him. I haven't talked to him in years, so I'm just going to hit him up one of these days. I'm like, hey, what was that game again? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of other like really ridiculous. The Digital Devil Saga. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Isn't it like a Persona thing. It, yeah, it was or Shin Megami Tensei. Tensei. It was yeah, a, there, we, there we go, Digital Devil Saga. It's another. It's just another one of those that was. It was really good. I love yeah. that PS2, yeah. um, Xeno Saga, PS2. 
okay, yeah. Like, yeah. There was so m- there were such revolutionary games that never clock tower. I'm trying to think. Uh, the one I was going to mention is PS1. I think uh, Star Ocean Second Story. That was PS1, wasn't it? No, I think that's PS2. Really? There was a Star Ocean on PS2 though. That was really big too. I thought the, I thought the one on PS2 was the bad one. But people loved it. Like uh, uh, it's still bad. <laughs> I mean, people like Plan Nine from Outer Space. It doesn't make it a good movie. It's a terrible movie. Till the end of time is the PS2 one. Till the end of time. Okay, I've heard that title before. Orphan was also a really good art JRPG. That was one of those random ones that was so weird, but it was so good. Wait, till the end of time is the the PS2 Star Ocean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, then there was Wild Arms Three. Mm-hmm. That was actually more arms than you need. Yes. By the way, they should have stopped it too. So, like, to sit there and you know say, oh, like to get PS2 stuff's relatively easy. Yeah. It was it was the grand time of the Final Fantasy X laugh. Yes. Uh, such yeah. A... There was Kyle. Misses. Can you can you recreate that for us? No. Oh, no, I cannot. Oh, as, a, as a disappointment to so, all of your listeners. Yeah. So well, now that we're done talking about that stuff, and we'll, we'll move on to the summer game shows. Can I talk about Elden Ring first? Because I haven't talked about Elden oh, Ring yet. Oh my gosh, yes. I finished yes. Elden Ring. Episode three of Andrew talked about <laughs> Elden Ring. This is like episode seven of Elden Ring. So I finished Elden Ring. Um, and it took me 62 hours. I 100%ed the game. And somebody's going to be like, I spent 20 hours on the first boss. How did you do that in 62 hours? I had played all the Dark Souls games <laughs> prior to Elden Ring, so I was kind of warmed up and ready to go. Also, I used uh, a very, very broken build in Elden Ring because the game lets you do it. So might as well take advantage of that fact. So Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a fantastic game. It is absolutely gigantic. And one of the things I appreciate most about it is after 62 hours, the novelty of the game itself had not worn off. So many times I've reached the end of a really long game and been like, all right, I'm ready to be done. Like Witcher 3, I, I, I went through it. I went through all the expansions and I was like, okay, I, I can't deal with any more witching. Like I got to stop being witchy. Um, and that took me like 60 one or two hours i think but at the end of elden ring i was kind of just like i wish there was more to do i i hadn't reached the point where i wanted to i felt satisfied being finished i had beaten everything gone to all the secret areas by the way if you're playing elden ring there's like a billion secret areas and some of them you will never find if you are not looking online if you're like i'm gonna do a blind playthrough you're gonna miss so much content uh Honestly, how some people find stuff just boggles my mind. Like, it's like, go here, turn left. This thing that looks exactly like every other thing is actually an illusion. There is nothing in the game to tell you that. I just found it because I hit every wall in the game. And I'm like, great, thanks, random internet person. Elden Ring is a game of amazing scope that I only have one criticism on. And that is, when you get towards the end, they start, it becomes very clear that they didn't quite know what to do about how powerful you get. Because you get towards the end of the game, and the map's gigantic, there are specific end game-ish zones, and they don't, the enemies just start hitting, like, they're wielding Mack trucks in their hands. Well, uh, I I had a ton of health and decent armor, and still I could get two, three hit by just regular enemies. Nothing super special. Yeah. Uh, and it it's very clear that they were just like I don't know, turn the damage up, like <laughs> just just make them hit harder, and get good. <laughs> and at that point, I was like, okay, I just want to get through these sections right here. I don't need to fight. 300 billion guys that can just wreck me in one combo that they never seem to run out of stamina on. Uh, Some of the end bosses are honestly not as hard as some people say they are because the game has that built-in summoning system where you can always summon an NPC with you. Yeah. And it the game is built around that. If you're like, oh, I don't need these summons, keep in mind, if you're on like run 30 of a boss... You should use the summon. The game was built with that in mind. 
So I beat it. I saw all the endings. Uh, I used a save scum to, to view all the endings. Item unlocked anyways. And it's so good. It's just a quality experience that, like I said, I am deeply saddened is over. Although I will say, if if, if it makes you sad to see stories end badly... Uh, don't don't get too attached to most of the NPCs in the game. Right? <laughs> like it's a from software game. You know what's going to happen. So Elden Ring, is it the best game of all time? No. Is it one of the best games of all time? Yes, very clearly. Is it game of the year? Almost. Uh, I can't um, unless Breath of the Wild two drops this year. It's game of the year. It's going to be game of the year. I can't see any other game even coming close. It's it's too good, it's too big, it's too, it's too, it's too, it's too Elden Ring. Yes, you, you can't be. We'll it. see what happens. We're, yeah, we will see what happens. <laughs> there'll, there'll probably be a DLC announcement in the fall. Yes, uh, fifteen million copies. You got to make DLC for that. That's crazy. If you're smart, uh, from software usually they they have always done a DLC for their stuff, uh, except Sekiro, which didn't need a DLC. So no. that makes sense. So, All right, Elden Ring. I'm done. I'm done. I know. I know you hate it. I'm gonna make you play it. At some I, point. It's not that I hate it. <gasps> Wild Card Plus. Oh, this is great. Oh. All right. Uh, one other thing before we get to Summer Game Fest that I want to talk about is I did start playing. Uh, a good buddy of mine was gracious enough to lend me a copy of Final Fantasy Origins: Stranger in Paradise. Who was this good buddy? Well, it wasn't you. <laughs> I know it wasn't me, so I want to know who it was. Um, Name drops. Name drops. No. Make- I, I do, actually, I don't have the, the signature on the disclosure form for that. Fair so enough. I'm actually under NDA. I'm my bad. <laughs> but uh, So he lent this game to me because it looked like mildly entertaining. And I'm playing it. And for those who are unaware, Final- Stranger in Paradise Final Fantasy Origins is... A remake, air quotes, of Final Fantasy 1. It's actually more of a prequel of Final Fantasy 1. Like the original Final Fantasy for the NES. And it's kind of Dark Souls-y. Except you don't lose anything when you die. You just go back to the last checkpoint you used. And it's super stylish, like Dark Souls-y combat. Okay? It's, it's kind of close to like a Final Fantasy 7 action system. Except there's no pause or anything like that. You, your character, Jack, his name's just Jack, as far as I can tell so far, he can swap between all the traditional Final Fantasy jobs. And when he hot swaps between them, his gear swaps and his abilities swap too. So, like, you're fighting an enemy, and you find out that this enemy sucks, and it's only really weak to fire. Well, good for you. You have a mage job. Click a button, you're now a mage. Burn it to death. And then click another button and hit someone with your greatsword. Yeah, you're good. The combat is dumb fun. It is, if you turn it on like chaos, which is beyond hard, I assume it's a big big challenge. But anything lower than that, it's just, it's dumb fun. You run around, you blow enemies into oblivion because for some reason Jack turns enemies into red crystals. I think that's something to do with, they haven't explained that. He just does it. They don't explain anything in this game. One thing that bothers me so much, okay? Jack walks around with a cell phone, all right? The elves use holograms. There is a boat that has a magic engine. There is a giant flying fortress that is almost in space. No one has invented the car. This bothers me to no end, all right? Because you are the four warriors of light, and you're venturing out, and you're, you're on a royal sanction. They don't give you anything. They don't even give you a horse. You just walk. You walk across this archipelago that is Cornelia or whatever it is. And it just bothers me deeply that at no point someone was like, we have cell phones and holograms. We should probably figure out a way to move quicker. Nope. Cell cell phones is more important. It's so weird. Also, Linkin Park exists. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. The game is fun. It is a B movie. The dialogue is so bad. It literally is so bad. The main character is a jerk. He's both a jerk and an idiot. And it is a B-movie game. It is highly entertaining, but it is also just... It's enjoyable. It's popcorn. All right? It's There's nothing that's going to win any awards, but it's a fun game. Uh, but that's what i got to talk about with Final Fantasy Origins. I'm actually probably going to play it now. <laughs> you, you should. 
Uh, you should play it. Like I said, it's dumb. And here's the thing. I beat Final Fantasy 15, so... Well, I've played dumb games. Do not get it. It makes Final Fantasy 15 look very good. So, <laughs> oh, the, is, I should say the combat is better, in my opinion, because there's so much more uh, interaction. Like you got instead of just out, holding down square. Yeah, like I'm on a boss now where the boss just refills its health bar back up whenever it wants. So you got to figure out how to deal with it. And then I realized if any of my attacks intersect with its neck. It does a ton of extra break damage, which it can't recover. And I was like, oh, I just have to hit the model in a very specific place that I can't target. So now I'm like searching through my jobs to figure out what can hit that high up normally. Because everything normally just hits like in your weapon range. But I found Lancer can throw a lance and I'm hoping I can just like lance that thing right in the neck. Um, Anyways, it's enjoyable. It's not going to win any awards. No one's even going to remember it like a year or two from now. But it's fun. It's yeah. a fun game. I'm just holding out for July when all the games come out that we wanted to play. All of them. Or June 30th. Sunbreak. Sun. Oh, uh, yeah. Sun. Break. Uh, so uh, you want to talk about Summer Game Fest? Yeah, let's because I feel like that'll be a quicker subject. Because once we start talking about Monster Hunter, uh, we're going to be yeah, on that for a couple a, minutes. That's going to be a turn. So, so I watched Summer Game Fest and, to my detriment because boy was it bad. I watched the the game trailers afterwards. Like right, I fair. spent most of my day. Um, the one, I, that, the I wanna, one. I want to preface saying I do like Jeff Keighley's events normally. Uh, I think the Game Awards is is pretty huge. He does a good job executing all these. I don't fault him for any of that. But I do want to say that whoever on his team scheduled three science fiction horror games in the first, like, ten minutes of the show, back to back to back, should just not do that ever again. Because that's just a bad idea. I mean, if they just be like, hey, this is the horror panel of this, and, like, dedicate, like, something to that. It like, was like it was like Aliens, and then Call of Duty. Or no, it was Aliens, Callisto Protocol, then Call of Duty, then uh, Fort Solace, which was just the same thing as Callisto Protocol. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Um, <laughs> it's such a weird show. And, and then Slitherhead. I saw something on Slitherhead. Uh, that wasn't at Summer's Game Fest. I don't. That know. was not at Summer's Game Fest. That, that was uh, somewhere else. But, but <sighs> So I want to talk about these reveals one by one. A, there's a new Aliens game coming. Why, why do people need that? Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. It is, I believe, the same team that did Isolation. And Isolation was good. Uh, this is Tindalos Interactive. I don't know what they've ever made. But it's a, it's a, it's a squad-based action game. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it, the trailer looked pretty cheap. Um, I, someone really must like the Alien license. It, it's a... Like you can do good work in that universe. It's it's a most people don't. It's a uh, what 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 was the developers you said? What what were the developers you said? Ten dollars interactive. Okay, yeah, this is Creative Assembly, and uh, Feral Interactive. So no, no, no. This is a squad based top down action game. It it looks oh uh, yeah. That's not what I saw. This isn't an isolation. And what did I see? I don't know what you saw. Anyways, that game did not look very good. Uh, Like I said, it looked cheap and. I don't think it's going to be particularly Dark good. Descent, right? What? Dark Descent? Yeah, Dark Descent. Uh, next up, the Callisto Protocol. So, <sighs> I have some thoughts about the Callisto Protocol. Mainly because I actually, going into the show, I was kind of hyped. I was like, Callisto Protocol, I like Dead Space. I like Dead Space 1 and 2. There wasn't a third one, no matter what people say. There was no third Dead Space. There was. It was no, just no, no. It, no. It was bad. Bad well, No. It exists. It was bad because parts of it were good. I mean, like, yeah, okay. There was a couple parts that were good, but boy, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Anyways, so for a little background there, Dead Space 1, 2, and 3 came out from Visceral Studios under EA. And then everyone was like, oh, make another Dead Space. Well, no, the first one wasn't under EA, was it? Yeah, it was. Was it? It was Visceral. They were all Visceral. No, I, I thought the first one, EA didn't really have their hands in, and that was all the ones after that. No, I thought EA... I thought they were all Visceral Entertainment, and I thought EA owned Visceral. Mm, I don't think so. Because EA shut Visceral down, so I hope they owned them. Otherwise, there's some legal questions No, no. There. The first game came out on its own project, and then EA picked it up when it... Okay. 
That's fair. I actually like two. Two is my favorite. Two was good. But at the same time, what mattered most is EA kept their hands out of it. It's true. And then three was just EA. Now, the reason why EA put their hands into the... Microtransactions. No. The reason why they did it Uh was... Number two was a flop sailing-wise. Really? It was the best one. It was the best one. But it was... What happened was is that was the bad time of EA having bad publicity everywhere. Uh, so sense. as soon as so the first one came out, mm-hmm. then EA just like like hey we're taking over that studio. We just helped them out, and we're gonna we're gonna be the you know parent company for this studio. And mm-hmm. as soon as they put their name on it, everyone was like whoa. Mm-hmm. So- and then two didn't sell well to begin with. Yeah. So. Be- because of that my my big issue so close to protocol i was excited to, to see it it's basically just dead space and that's actually my issue watching the gameplay it's just dead space yes it is literally dead just space. dead space yeah. they didn't do anything to it and that kind of bothers me because i've played dead space and we're getting a Dead Space remake anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. There's a Dead Space 1 remake coming. What, what's the point of the Callisto Protocol? Well, we'll see because I'm probably going to play it. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to probably play it at some point. I just I kind of was hoping for some twist or something. It just a Night Shyamalan. <laughs> or just something to make the gameplay a little bit fresher. The 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 gameplay shown was Dead space. Yes, they showed you. So dead space. I'm. We'll see when it comes out. Yep, that that's coming out December second. Yes. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna play it. Speaking of things you're gonna buy and play, did you see the new Call of Duty? Yes. Did you know it's about modern warfare? And it's about it's two, two two modern warfare. So this is pretty unique. I've never seen a sequel to a Call of Duty game. To a remake of a Call of Duty game. <laughs> <laughs> a remake of a sequel of a remake. <laughs> so terrible. I'm actually debating on getting it. What did? Didn't you see the trailer? It's amazing. They have physics where crates move around on top of a ship now. That was actually now, their selling point. Was- yes, yeah, <laughs> like the reason why I even thought about it is one of my longest times playing games and one of my biggest things is if they have certain games always have attached to me like i'm a big fan of monster rancher because that is something me and my mom did mm-hmm. a lot yeah. that was how we spent a lot of time together was playing monster rancher when i was a kid yeah. this one is a later period in my life in my early 20s that i got to play with my buddies, we were all, they started playing Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. They kept telling me, play it, play it, play it. I was like, no, that's for scrubs. I'm not going to be a bro. Then I started playing with them. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed it because it was just getting to play with them, hang out with them, play games. I was say, I remember back in the day, you used to play a lot of Call of Duty. Yeah, because I was playing with them all the time. Yeah. And then I got good because I was playing with them all the time. <laughs> and then Modern Warfare 2 came out. And we... Whoa, 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 no. Modern Warfare 2 is coming out soon. Shut up. Uh, Kyle, Shut you, up. you can't play the future. Yes, I can. So when that came out, we all bought our copies. We were all there on release night, yeah. standing outside the GameStop. Did you Did you cosplay? No. What? Then we got our copies, and we started playing immediately, and we that was just one of the games I have fond memories of because I started playing Call of Duty with them at the end of the first Modern Warfare. Mm-hmm. So second one, I got to play with them from beginning to end. And now, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> like, we had so much fun playing together. We did so much stuff. We always, and you know, we always have that one idiot who's like, my dad works at Nintendo. <laughs> this kid, his, he was he was a good kid. He was a good, he was a nice kid. He was good. He was a couple years younger than us, but he was like, I'm going to be the next pro gamer, and I got my clan we're so good and we're going to be scouted by these people to be pro Call of Duty players. And I'm like, wow, you know, a pro Call of Duty, dude, right? He, I don't think he made it. That's amazing. I'm absolutely sure he didn't made it because <laughs> me and my buddy are like, okay, we have to play against him one of these days. And he kept always finding excuses. The one day he didn't have an excuse. So we played against him and Was he just we terrible? He just wrecked his yeah, clan. Yeah, yeah. 
because we had our own clan. We had like four dedicated players that we played, and the other two were randoms. Yeah. And um, we wrecked him because me and the other kid that played mainly, mm-hmm. we just kept finding him and killing him. <laughs> like, that's all we did. We we won the match just by killing him. Did you 360 no scope? All the time. All, all the time? Uh, the one I build, I played a lot during that time, was the Captain America build, uh-huh. which was the adrenaline that made you run faster, the other one that allowed you to knife quicker and never get tired. Uh-huh. And... That's called cocaine. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's called And cocaine. I played the knife build. Yeah. And <laughs> I just run through the map at full speed, just... <laughs> stabbing everybody <laughs> and it was it was a fun time and we wrecked him and it was funny it was it was funny it was a good time so you're gonna have a lot of nostalgia when you pick up modern warfare 2 if, again i don't know if i am really the reason why i'm not is because that group of friends we don't really talk that much anymore we all have moved on with our lives we all separated mm-hmm. and i don't have a player base that it would make worth my time to play it's fair I picked up Infinite or Infinite Warfare or whatever. It was like four years ago. The whatever one was, yeah, like two or three years ago, three years ago. No, Infinite, War, Infinite Warfare was like four. Whatever the one was, like three or four years. Like it might be Infinite Warfare. It's been a long time. Yeah, I picked that one up because my one buddy's like, I'll play it with you all the time, and we're all gonna get. Did, to get- did you pick up the remake of Modern Warfare? No. Also called Modern Warfare. Yeah. All right. They're terrible with naming systems. But I picked up that one game to play with them. Yeah. Nobody played. They played for like a week and then just never. Like, and I, I don't, I'm not, I couldn't get myself to play it dedicated. So I That's let fair. it go. Um, so moving on. Yes. Moving on. Fort Solace. Now, this game looked interesting to me, even though it was literally. I s- saw nothing on that. It, I don't, they, they say it is a tight Fast-paced narrative game set on a remote Martian mining outpost, inspired heavily by Dead Space, crossed with the movie Moon. Have you seen the movie Moon by Duncan Jones? No. All right. A, your next Thursday with Greg, you should you should all watch Moon and talk about that because that movie is fantastic and it has aged well, except for Kevin Spacey as the robot. Okay. Um, you should watch that movie. That that's actually the thing that gets me. If they were just like inspired by Dead Space, I'd be like, all right, whatever. The fact that they called out Duncan Jones's Moon as a major inspiration, that tells me that they may be doing something good with the narrative here. Uh, the trailer is kind of like generic, spooky. Like, I don't even know if there's monsters or anything. Just one one person gets grabbed in the trailer with a weird hand. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's like a combat game. It's mm-hmm. a, they claim it's a narrative game, so I think it might be closer to a walking sim, a walking sim, or something closer to like maybe Until Dawn or something like that. Speaking of which, the Quarry comes out tomorrow. I'm very excited. About I don't know that. What that is. Did you ever play Until Dawn? Yes. Okay. This it's it's the spiritual successor to Until okay. Dawn by the same company. It's called the Quarry. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember we talked about this one. And it has David Arquette in it as a grumpy old sheriff who tries to use hip vernacular with the kids. Okay. When you go to play that, if you want to talk about it in the next show, can you get some captures of that, please? The Quarry? Yes. I, I wasn't planning on playing it anytime soon, but I mean, I, when I do, I will get some captures. Okay. Specifically of David Arquette's face. Okay. Because I want to start splicing some stuff like that into our videos. Yeah, sure. So next up was the uh, horror game Routine, which, shocking no one, is also set in space, and it's a horror game. I saw that. Um, that game was announced in 2012, and this is the first trailer since then. Uh, it's about creepy robots. Uh, the robots have teeth. Why would you make robots with teeth? Why not? It, it has a creepy, like retro sci-fi aesthetic that I, I enjoyed a lot and I'm curious to see more from it but they really didn't show anything aside from a creepy robot Yeah. Uh, next up we have Stormgate from a bunch of people who quit Blizzard probably for the best <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's an RTS it's free to play uh, it's sci-fi plus demons and I chuckled pretty hard because the trailer is so generic uh, the demons look like Diablo, and it made me laugh very much. It, it was so weird. Um, I I gotta say, it it's not my thing. I hate RTS games. 
and it just looks like they were like, we can we can kind of coast. Nobody's made a StarCraft three. We're safe. <laughs> uh, I was not impressed at all. Um, next up was a, an indie game called High Water. I re- honestly couldn't tell you much about it aside from it looked like every other indie game I've ever yes. seen. Um, have you hit Street Fighter six yet? Not yet. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you about that one. Marvel's Midnight Suns. All right, so. It's made by Firaxis. Mm-hmm. It is a turn-based strategy game featuring your favorite Marvel characters in a dark universe. Who's this for? Uh-huh. Who who sat down and was like, I need a deep tactical Marvel game? Because, you know, Marvel is mm-hmm. very well known for its its pacing. They were wrong. I Look, it's for somebody out there. I just can't. I don't know who it is. Yeah, I don't either. It's coming out October 7th, though, so... Woo! There's Hulk with horns. Yeah. Hulk Hulk with horns. Um, And then the final big part, Naughty Dog stuff. All right. That's not a euphemism, Kyle. It's the the gaming company. All right, so the big tentpole at Summer Game Fest was Naughty Dog coming on stage to announce that they are remaking the remake of Last of Us Part 1 as a PS5 and PC port. All right, who who is who also is this for? Because yeah, Last of Us Part One is nine years old, but it was already remade once, and it runs fine on the PS Five. I don't get it. Uh, the only thing I can possibly think of is Sony and Naughty Dog do not have another IP that they have or have developed yet, and they're looking for a stopgap to make some money. Yes, because they also announced that. The Last of Us Part Two Factions, the multiplayer system, is actually being spun out into an independent multiplayer-only Last of Us game. Nobody wants that that I can think of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Factions in Last of Us Part One was fine. Uh, it was okay. But they're going to have to do some pretty wild things to make a standalone Last of Us multiplayer game work. Like, if they had some kind of dynamic narrative or something like that, that'd be cool. On the other hand, it just seems like things spiraled out of control, and now they need money. Yes. But I, I'm not going to say The Last of Us PS5 remake doesn't look good. It looks great. It looks fantastic. That's not the point, really. It's Was this needed? This is the second remake of this game in nine years. Why? I don't know. Why do they keep remaking Grand Theft Auto V? Because <laughs> it prints money. It does print money. It prints money. It was a good game, too. Uh, I actually didn't get very far in it. I didn't like it that much. So Grand Theft Auto games, I have a weird quirk where I always think I'm going to enjoy them more than I do. And then I buy it, and then I realize I don't enjoy them. And then I just never finish playing them. Do you want to tell... So what's this about? A Street Fighter Six? Yeah, they announced Street Fighter Six, And I liked... I, I don't play Street Fighter that much. It's like an open world Street Fighter, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Um, what made me laugh about it, though, is they showed some of the characters, and they're trying to do hyper-realistic versions of the characters. Uh-huh. And they look so weird. Yeah, they do. One of the prominent things they showed was Chung Lee kicking a dude, and everyone was super excited because they felt the need to give her butt physics. All right, Kyle, I, I'm going to tell you, it's not a new thing in fighting games from, It's not from the island of Japan. No, it's not. But, like, to watch some of these people go <laughs> crazy over, like, <laughs> you can see the muscles twitch when she kicks. I'm like, all right, all right. who cares? Kyle, I'm not sure you're one to judge about this. <laughs> I am one to judge about it because, yes, I am <laughs> might be one of those people, but I'm a higher class of those people. <laughs> Being classist over I there. hold my pinky out when I, look oh, at, <laughs> when I look at butt physics, I hold my, my pinky, pinky out. Like a gentleman. <laughs> and I wear a monocle. So Is that to zoom in? Like I just couldn't believe it. They're like like you can see all the muscles and the contours. I'm like, okay, and did we see her did you see what her face looks like? She looks so weird. <laughs> but you don't play Street Fighter that much. No, I haven't played it in forever since four. That's fair. Well, the reason why I stopped playing is because five, 5 was PS yeah, exclusive. Yeah, 5 was PlayStation exclusive. You weren't missing much no. from what I heard. Um, I mean, if you like Street Fighter, I guess you were missing a lot. But uh, yeah, I I was, I was saw that. I saw the original trailer for it. And I'm like, is this an open world game? And I'm like, that person looks like a Street Fighter fighter. 
And then, then I'm like, I am sure that's Chung Lee right there. She looks weird. She does look weird. She she does. She looks odd. Yeah, it's uh, it's the they're all style, look odd. They, they all look odd because Ken looks like a disgruntled dad. That's you know. All right, that is him going Ken. through. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is he. He he looks like he's he's getting ready for Pride Month. That's what that's what he looks like. Yeah, he's going to be very popular in those parades. Yes, so I'm pseudo excited, just because. Would you say you're quasi excited? Yeah, quasi. All right. Okay, so that's that's all I remember from Summer Game Fest. Anything else on my list? Uh, something about Slitherhead came up not too long ago. I didn't see anything about that. So you're you're the one that stays on top of that game. So I'm going to. Gonna I'm to, I'm going to have to know. get more into that. Um, so there is a Capcom show on Monday. I am very excited to see that. Uh, yes, because there should be more Resident Evil stuff there. Ooh. Monster Hunter stuff. Yeah, f- I figure we're gonna save that for the next week. Also, uh, Xbox and Bethesda show on Sunday. Yes. That's gonna be huge. What do you, do you have any predictions for it? We got four minutes left. Uh, I think we're gonna get more about Slitherhead. I think we're gonna get another Gears game. I actually think we're gonna get a Gears collection, like the Master Chief collection. Maybe. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of one of their other big IPs. They just bought something not too long ago that was like really big. Bethesda. Did... They bought Bethesda. Yeah, they bought Bethesda. So Starfield. They're going to show Starfield. Starfield. Yeah, that's the one. Uh... Eh. What What else you got? What What else do you think is going to be there? There's got to be something. Who else did we say? Uh, Xbox and who else? It's Bethesda. Bethesda. They own Bethesda, but they, they, they put Bethesda right next to their name because okay. they're like, we own Bethesda. Just so you know. Yeah. Um, maybe Fallout? Something with Fallout? Ooh, that, that'd be an interesting one. But, uh, okay, with our last couple minutes, let's go over the games. I have two that I want to pick up for you for your oh. action games. Oh, um, two? You want me to do two? No, I have one or two. One oh, of the two. Oh, I can pick. Okay. Yes. Or I'm going to pick. So, Gears... I don't know how many of the Gears games you played. Gears 4. Every single one of them. You played all of them? I've, I played all of them. Even Judgment, the whole, okay. whole one. GTA 5, you're stuck. Oh, <laughs> come on. I hate GTA 5. Maybe next time you'll play Sonic all the way through or get it to work. Jeez. All right. I'll play Plus, GTA I could, 5. I, I can't find my original list that I had. That had just some so, of the, someone um, out there is like, this dude's complaining about having to play GTA, GTA 5. 5. One of the best games it's ever. Fun. I, it's fun. It's a lot better. So what's mine? All right, all right, okay. I got, I got one. I, th- I'm not sure if you're gonna like it or not, but I'm gonna go with it. Okay. Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. All right. It is the enhanced version of Planescape Torment. They fixed it up. Planescape Torment is an isometric RPG from 1997. Oh gosh, I know what this is. It is the story is fantastic. I think I played it. It's one. Wait, really? You played Planescape Torment? I th- I can't. Re- I I'm... I will be deeply shocked if you have played play, played Planescape Torment. I will give it you an alternative later. But that's you were talking about games you wanted a strong story with. That is one of my favorite games of all time. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna play it. If you've already played it, let me know. Though. Okay, that that's gonna come down to I gotta watch some of it and then I'll, when yeah. I'm playing it, and then I'll be like, oh yes or no. That game is long. I'm gonna tell you that right now. That game is super long. Okay, and there are like nine endings. Okay. And I'm not going to go for nine endings. Get you, whatever you can lock yourself out of most of the endings in the first like three hours. Of nice. <laughs> so there's that. I think next time we get together, we're going to focus on Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. Yeah, it's going to be all Monster Hunter. Not uh, all and, of it. And the Xbox Bethesda show. Yes. Xbox Bethesda, Monster Hunter. I'm going to have more on Slitherhead and weeks, the games that we played. Two weeks from now is going to be the uh, 21st, I believe. Yes. And hopefully we can have something for Pride Month to like show... Which, you know, for yeah. Pride. I, I believe our original idea was which Monster Hunter monster was a bottom. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm a supporter. <laughs> As you know, because I'm the reason why you and your husband are together. That's true. That is true. Wait, and I, What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not gay. What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> so, you know, I just felt like we got to start, like, advocating for months, different months and stuff. Like, I, uh, I would like to I, advocate I, for August. Okay. If we're doing months. Yes. But yeah, well, we will, to to our listeners, we will be having a couple Pride segments. Yes. And by that, I mean one, because there's only one more yes. game video game. 